Welcome to the SM023 mini series, episode two. Today we're going to take a look at the CAD and CAM work um, of the project, and we're going to start off by establishing a small pocket that I'm going to use to reestablish a zero point on my XY coordinates, since I'll be working on this part across multiple different days, um, and it will be taking in and out of the middle table a lot of times. This will allow me to establish my zero. I'll start by going to File Open, and you can see I open up the part. I'm going to use the magnifier, which is the built-in Windows tool. Hopefully this will help since the YouTube quality isn't necessarily quite as good as the screen capture program, but it'll allow you to zoom in where my cursor is. Here I'm rotating the part around. Uh, I want to note that I didn't actually design this part, but rather had an engineer design it for us. Uh, this is great though, as it allows him to send me a file and I'll be able to mock it up on the table. I just pointed to an area in the center there. That's where I'm going to establish a rectangle. You can follow along with the dimensions here. It'll be 0.35 inches square. And what this is going to allow me to do is establish a zero point as I refixture or reset up the part. If you'll notice, the part doesn't really have any square edges, so I can't use um, the edges like you normally would to establish your X and Y zero points. And even so, since I'll be using a fixture sometimes and maybe even a vise, Having this here will always allow me to know for certain where my zero point is. I've gone ahead and uh, drawn the rectangle in Bobcad Cam. I've also added uh, radiuses around the edges as I'll be milling this with an end mill. And uh, as you know, you'll need radiuses. You cannot mill square corners. And I'm next going to take a look at where that, prop, that square res uh, resides in the XY plane. As you can see, I right click and choose Entity Summary, and I can see it's 1.35 inches on the Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that amount, and I'm actually going to move the whole part down so that the bottom edge of this part will rest exactly on the um, Y0. So I select it, and I'm translating it here. Enter in my Y of negative 1. Point, uh, here, 1.35. Click OK. And sure enough, there the whole part moved. So now I know it's exactly centered um, with the Y0. I'll, I will also need to move it over um, the half of the uh, half of the excuse me half of the width of the rectangle, which is a 0.35 divided by two, in order to use my edge finder, uh, which I probably would do along the bottom edge and, and say the left edge. I'm now going to go ahead and create my uh, pocket in the cam uh, tree of Bobcat Cam. I selected my geometry. Now I edit my pocket and I'm going to make this an offset pocket out. That's going to allow me to start from the interior and mill out. I'll be using a 1 8 inch end mill, total depth of 1 tenth of an inch, and I'll do that across two passes. No side allowance needed. And here I'll enter in my 1 8 inch end mill. I'm still learning with aluminum, so I'm going to try 9,000 spindle speed and cutting feed of 10 uh, with a plunge of 3. Um, go ahead and click Compute Toolpath, and you can see in green um, I've got my toolpath. I'm now going to hide using the selection mask the rest of the part so that you can see the actual um, depth cuts of the toolpath. If I scroll in and I'll rotate around, you can see it's going to take two separate passes, each at uh, 0.05 inches. I'm going to change, I like to use my roughing cuts as red, just roughing R for red. And now I will go ahead select all and unhide everything and I believe I am now good to move this part over to the uh, Mach 3. You can see I've created the g-code now I'm going to click post and save as and I'll save this as sm023.nc which is the format that I use to import into Mach 3.
go ahead and open up the G code. And there you can see my toolpath. Obviously you don't have the rest of the part in Mach 3, you just had the toolpath that you exported via Bobcad Cam. So I'll go ahead and click cycle start when I'm ready. Here I'm inserting the 1 8 inch end mill in the collet and into the tag mill. As you can see I'll just tighten it by hand and then I will grab my two wrenches and really secure it in the collet. Next I'll use my 2 inch offset height electronic height gauge uh, to establish my Z0 and if you are more interested in this part I've got another blog post just dedicated to um, how I use that and where I purchased it from. Here I'm applying some Tapmatic Dual Action Plus Aluminum uh, lubricant or cooling fluid. I don't have flood cooling, mist cooling, or unfortunately even any sort of a um, air blowing system yet, so this will have to do for now. Part of this experience is sharing both the successes and failures, and here I'm entering into the part and I believe my feed rate is too fast given how I'm cooling the chips, and you'll see right here in a second I break the end bill. There it's broken. So what I did was I went into my, into Bobcad, reposted the uh, cutting feed rate with, uh, I think, from 10 down to 7. So here's the finished part. Uh, ignore the milled area in the bottom left, that was just me experimenting. The part, which you'll see hopefully in episode 3 start to form, uh, will be similar to the CAD diagram you saw in the beginning with the square in the center.